Hey, Mike here with another animation tutorial. You can actually replace those food photos with books or movies and have a very nice example animation for your portfolio. So play around with it after we're done here and come up with some other options. Okay, so I downloaded four completely different photos of food and placed them onto the canvas and an iPhone screen with a dark background. This is our starting point. I also created some text, which basically is uh, the dish name and some calories, and I'm gonna duplicate it four times and create an appropriate dish name for each one. And we're still doing it outside of the canvas, so we're not really putting anything on the iPhone screen yet. To make our project look a little bit more real, I'm adding a navigation bar at the top and changing its color to white. And I'm just gonna call this screen breakfast ideas. Now I create a masking square for our photos and it's gonna be 375 points by 375. So I'm making sure those are the actual values for the height and the width and then I'm putting it right next to the navbar. And of course putting it a little bit under it so the navbar can cast a shadow onto the mask. This is also a great time to actually name those layers so let's do that. Now I can add a shadow to the navbar and as usual it's gonna be a mix of dark grey and a little bit of blue and we'll keep the Y value at 8 and the blur at 16 and I'm gonna bring the opacity down so it's just barely visible. Now I'm gonna change the background color for our mask to a dark blue as well so it's gonna blend a little bit better with the dark background. And because of the way the animation is structured, it's absolutely essential that you actually name that certain layer mask. So you won't be mistaking it for anything else, you will know how to find it quickly. It's also gonna be easier for you if you log the navbar and the background layers. So now I'm dragging our first photo onto the canvas and uh, placing it next to our mask and then just simply selecting both layers and masking it. You can adjust the photo position by simply just moving the photo layer inside the mask. Now when this is done, let's just move our text in. And I'm gonna place it on the bottom part of the photo and make sure it's also within the mask boundaries. The mask is also now a group, so let's name that group photo 1. So it's gonna be much easier when we have a lot more photos and a lot more different screen states. To make sure the text is always visible on the photo, I'm adding another rectangle and filling it with a dark gradient. I'm picking black on each side of the gradient, but the top part is gonna be completely zero opacity, so it's gonna be fully transparent. Now I'm gonna duplicate the entire mask folder and then drag it outside of the canvas of the iPhone. You can now remove the photo from the mask and simply drag the second photo in. If it's easier, you can copy the photo and then click on the mask and paste it in. Now it's time to add the right text to the second photo, so I'm changing that quickly and moving on. Of course, you can also just paste in the text, but if you just write it in place, it's gonna be in the same spot, so that might work better. Now I'm gonna quickly do the same thing to the other two photos, making sure the layer names, the mask names are appropriate and then the text is right. So at this point we should have four square masks named photo 1, 2, 3 and 4 and only one of them being on the iPhone. Make sure the aspect ratio lock is off and then holding the ALT key simply resize the photo vertically so it's gonna resize from each side and keep it at about 105 points. As you can see the text disappears here but that's good, that's what we want. So now I'm gonna drag it onto the artboard and do the exact same thing with the other two photos. Make sure that there's at least one point spacing between the photos, so there should be like a dark line between them. It's gonna make it a lot easier to view them if there are similar colors, so the photos won't be blending together. I'm also moving our navbar to the very top of the layer list. So now the final screen should look a little bit like this. Now I duplicate the entire screen, and on the second screen the first thing that I do is actually make that photo in the mask a little bit smaller. Now selecting just the mask and holding the ALT key, I'm decreasing the height of it to 105 and make sure that lock is also off here. Now I can shrink the photo and move it a little bit higher and then drag the second photo higher and then select just the mask and holding the ALT key I'm gonna increase the height to 375 points. Now we duplicate that screen again, shrink the second photo and then enlarge the third. 
make sure to keep the same values again. So the smaller photo should be 105 points high and then the larger photo should simply be a square. And I'm repeating the same process again to create screen number 4. So this should be our result. Four screens and each screen has a different photo opened on it. I'm gonna select all the smaller photos and decrease their opacity to 50%. You can also do that by pressing number 5 on the keyboard. That will simply make the larger photos stand out a little bit more. When this is done, select every one of those larger photos, but just the photo, not the entire mask, and then make it larger. Now it's time to add some interactions. So on the very first screen, select the second photo, the small one, and add an interaction to it. Set the target screen to screen number 2, and the transition to motion, and set it at about 1 second. Then repeat those steps for all the other screens, so on the first screen the smaller photo number 3 will point to screen 3, the photo number 4 will point to screen 4, and so on. Now when you hit play you can test the animation, so you can see that by clicking on each photo it expands, but you don't have to click them in order, you can click any photo you want and it will actually transition the animation to there. So now if you exchange the food photos for something else like a movie or a book, you can have a very nice element to add to your portfolio because those kind of animations can be really good to look at and can make a good impression on your potential clients. So yeah, have fun, play around with the transitions, you can also animate the text a bit. So don't forget to subscribe, enjoy and see you next time!